So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Merle Massey. I'm the coordinator of undergraduate research here at the University of Saskatchewan. And with me is Brooke Kleebauer, who's uh, our student assistant. Brooke, sorry, you introduce yourself. <laughs> I think you're muted. You think I'd know how to do that by now. Yeah, um, yeah. I am the undergraduate student assistant at the Undergraduate Research Initiative. So I am a commerce student in my last year um, and marketing and communications is kind of my thing. So that's kind of what I do for the SHRE program. And if you ever email, chances are you're probably contacting me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you'll also see me on our social media channels and everything. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yes, and so if anything ever happens to me, Brooke is just going to jump in and just take over the whole program. So you'll you'll see Brooke uh, as part of that. But welcome um, to our bit of an overview today for the student undergraduate research experience. So the Sure Club. Um, I'm going to give a, a quick little presentation. I'm going to try not to take too much time, but hopefully it kind of answers some of the questions if you're new. And even if you're returning, if you were part of the SURE program last year, we have made a few slight tweaks. And so this may give you a bit of an overview of what to expect. Of course, today is May the 4th, so may the 4th be with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you want, if you want to think about things that way, um, I recognize that I live within Tree Six territory in the homeland of the Métis. I did have a chance to work with the Gunnamo Center to go through my and create my own land acknowledgement. If ever you get a chance to do that, I do recommend it. So where did Sure start? So previous students who have had positions working as undergraduate student researchers with faculty. So my office has funded uh, these uh, for quite a number of years, not this year. We, we uh, the University of Saskatchewan um, is in a bit of a funding crunch, so we weren't able to fund any of you this year, but in the past we have, and we have um, asked these students what what more we could do, what more my office could be doing to support summer student researchers. And the two things that they said was additional training and support, particularly for building your research skills and connection to other student researchers. So that's how we built the SURE program. But of course, we didn't just build it on the backs of students. We actually also asked faculty supervisors. So we did multiple surveys of past undergraduate faculty supervisors, and we designed the program using their feedback. We also talked to a couple of colleges uh, across the University of Saskatchewan. So the Western College of Veterinary Medicine runs their own program that's very similar to SURE. And so a lot of what we do at SURE was built off of what they do because they knew that it was important. And uh, pharmacy and nutrition also did a lot of student training. And so we worked with them as well to design the SURE program. So this was a pilot that we started in May of 2020. So here we are kicking off the second year. So for those of us who or those of you who were with us last year, thanks for coming back. Last year's cohort was about 300 University of Saskatchewan summer students. All of the ones last year were signed up by their college or their department. So they literally sent me their lists of the students uh, who were there and that's who was signed up. And uh, and we were, we've been entirely online during the pandemic, so we're still online. Maybe eventually we'll be able to be back in person and do some in person stuff. We're looking forward to that, but right now we're still online. Uh, this year, the sign up was both. You could you were probably signed up by your department, your college, or your or your supervisor. So you know, surprise, you've been registered for this. Um, but a lot we did also have an open registration as well, and so you may have come in that way. So sure is an explicit focus on skills. So this is a space where what we can do is that what you're doing in the lab or in the field or in the archive or wherever you are that you're doing your research this summer, there's a whole bunch of skill sets that all of you need to have around things like communication, professional development and and research skill and analysis. And so we wanted to be able to offer a way to aggregate that. And so it's about training, practice and, adve and development. It is co-curricular. So that means at the end of summer, I send out a survey and you guys all tell me sort of which ones that you went to and 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 provide a bit of feedback and then i upload those onto the university of saskatchewan co-curricular uh transcript and so that it shows up on your transcript and so this isn't 
us one that's openly available, you can't go in and, and sign yourself up. Uh, we have it set up so that you have to sort of um, report to me first, report to my office, and then we sign you up for your co-curricular record. But it's designed to complement your disciplinary training. So we centralize what we can centralize, uh, particularly things around library communications. That's our biggest area, but we've got a couple of new things that are happening this summer that I'm going to tell you about. And we continually align it. So if we, if you have ideas of webinars that you think would be really useful, please send Brooke or I um, a, a, a comment about that and send us your ideas because we can certainly expand or move things around as as you think that we need it. But the final thing that we want to do is really to connect students to one another. And this is really important because we want to enhance your connection and your learning because sometimes you don't want to ask your faculty supervisor if you think, you know, that oh, maybe maybe I should know the answer to this, but I don't. Is there someone else that I can ask? And so we try and create some spaces for those sorts of conversations to happen. It's also campus wide involvement. It's not just Brooke and I putting on all of these things. No, it's not. Um, University of Saskatchewan Library is our largest partner. Um, safety, safety Services is a huge partner, SECC, so Student Employment and Career Centre, and various others across campus. So, this is a campus wide program where everybody's kind of got a couple fingers in this pie. And we really welcome that because we can't put on a program ourselves. We're not experts in everything. So, just so you know, this is campus wide. Again, how we recruit students, so colleges and units register their summer students. They literally send me lists of your names and your emails, and I add you to the list. We also have done a social media blitz. That's Brooke. She does a great job. Um, we've put it on pause and done some announcements. We'll probably do that again this week. We're still adding students, which is great. We've done emails to past sure students. So sometimes you've you've been with us sort of all along. We ran it in three terms. We ran it last summer and in the fall and in the winter. And uh, so sometimes those students might come back on board. We've also sent out uh, emails to college and unit undergraduate coordinators and particularly co-op and internship coordinators. So if you happen to have friends who maybe they're not doing a research um, position this summer, but maybe you've got friends who are doing co-ops or internships, Send them the link to Sure because there's this whole series of webinars built into Sure this year around entrepreneurship. And so, if you've got friends who are kind of interested in doing business stuff, please welcome them into Sure because there's some stuff there that they might really like. And I'll tell you about it in a second. So, this is what the training looks like it's all online. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. We're in the middle of the pandemic, so it's all online. So, but this is about student choice. So, one of the tweaks that we've made to the program this year that's different from last year is that you do need to do at least a certain number of your training within each of these three, I'm going to call them umbrellas. So, the first umbrella is communication. So, that's things like literature searches, academic writing, public writing, how to do a research poster, how to do a journal article, and then showing up for the end of summer symposium. So, anything that we offer around communications, most of them are coming from the library or from me, um, that's one of the umbrellas. Then we want to make sure that you do some of your training under that umbrella. The second umbrella is research skills. So that's things around data management. There's a there's an upcoming uh, seminar around specifically around research data management. I cannot emphasize that one enough. Every researcher across campus should attend that one. So so do register for that one. But anything around ethics and citations, analysis, we have a whole bunch of videos from uh, the Canadian um, hub for it's called Chaser for. Um, what is it called? Active and social research. That's it. Anyway, Chaser. And uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, videos and webinars around there on SPSS and Vivo, um, survey design and uh, mixed methodology, things like that. Those are all count. If you're doing any safety, uh, if you have to do lab safety, w, uh, WMIS, any of those sorts of things that you take through safety services, those, those count within what's called sort of research skills, research management, research data analysis. It's kind of a, a funky category, but sort of it's my junk category where all the really cool stuff goes. And then the third category is professional skills, and this is professional and entrepreneurship skills is really where this is. 
So anything around networking skills, job hunting skills, um, equity, diversity, and inclusion, anything around Indigenous knowledge. We have a, a seminar coming up this summer from the UN Sustainable Development Goals, so that falls under this broad category. And entrepreneurship, and there's a whole bunch of modules around entrepreneurship that, that are new this summer. And so I'm going to talk about that. But what we want you to do is that we want you to take at least two hours from within each of these, these broad uh, umbrellas and then the remaining four hours is totally up to you put it wherever you need it to be depending on where you're at some of you are brand new students and you might want to be spending more time around literature review and citations and those sorts of things some of you are more senior students where maybe you're more into interested in professional skill development and those sorts of things you want that networking you want to know how to ace your interview um, or and you're or perhaps you're more interested in entrepreneurship so by all means focus your last your your open four hours in those categories so um, the categories are not, some of the things might actually kind of fall under multiple categories. It's, 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 a, it's a broad guideline, it's not hard and fast, but communication includes things like writing a journal article, effective oral communication, the literature reviews, there's three modules within literature reviews. Um, research skills and management includes things like, some of you might have to be taking your TCPS core two through the tri-agency. It's about a four hour course actually around ethics. And so that gets you an awful lot of sure credit hours. If you're taking a lab safety, WIMIS, I mentioned those field safety, things like that. So that goes under research data management, research skills and research management. And then professional development and entrepreneurship, some of the ones that I talked about, but we've got a whole series of modules around um, entrepreneurship that, that I'm going to look at in more detail in a second. So here's the other thing. Uh, sure is both the live version of things like this one that's being recorded, but everything that gets recorded through Sure gets uploaded to our RASI YouTube channel. RASI stands for Research Acceleration and Strategic Initiatives, and that's the office that both Brooke and I work for. So the RASI YouTube channel holds all of the Sure webinars, and so all of the previous Sure webinars that are that are up there, and there are quite a lot of them, any of those can also be watched asynchronously. Let's say that you're busy or you're in the field or you don't have good Wi-Fi or you know something, you know, your cat threw up, whatever it is that causes you to miss a particular webinar that you've been signed up for. Don't worry about it. You will be able to watch it afterward and still receive credit um, for those webinars. Also, you can watch any of the previously recorded webinars that have been recorded last summer, last fall, or last winter, and those can also go towards your sure credit. So you're actually, you've got, you're going to have a huge smorgasbord of things, and you only have to come up with 10 hours within that. So it's, it's, it's pretty manageable, I promise. Faculty quite like the way that we've set up this program because we leave the disciplinary training up to your faculty supervisor, but then anything that we can that we can centralize like literature reviews and writing and professional development, we try and set and, and centralize it. And so this is this is a, um, a comment from Regan Mandrick, who is one of the um, strategic and amazing professors on campus. So, summer 2021, there are 38 confirmed webinars coming up this summer, and there may be more uh, yet to come. If uh, I, I will send uh, the link and maybe maybe uh, Brooke can put the link uh, to our website into the chat. Uh, that'd be great. Thanks, Brooke. And um, the schedule is all up. All of the links, all of the registration links are there. The only exception, two exceptions right now, the writing retreat that we're setting up in August doesn't yet have a link because there's going to be kind of multiple sessions that you can sign up for. And the second thing that's not yet live is the end of summer symposium. But do keep that symposium in mind. One of the things though that I want you to think about is Professors, because this program has been designed specifically around communications and writing, there's a huge component around that. Professors have asked me to ask you to keep in mind that yes, doing a poster for the end of summer symposium or some kind of a presentation on your research is great, but don't let that get in the way of also potentially doing an actual journal article. So if any of you are going to be doing research that could maybe be turned into a journal article for publication, do think about some of those communication streams as well, because the professors would really, really like you to think beyond the symposium. So just putting that out there. But there are a huge number of events, um, lots of choice, 
and 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 we're quite proud of that. We're happy to see so many uh, groups acro across campus jumping into the sandbox with us and offering things for our students. This is a new addition for summer 2021. This is the entrepreneurship um, modules. Now, uh, you don't have to go to all of these. If you register for one, all of a sudden you have to go to eight. No, you don't. Um, but if you're interested in them, do please check them out and pick and choose. These came from uh, Research Excellence and Innovation, and they used to run a summer mentorship program specifically for summer entrepreneurs. Um, but because of the USASC budget cuts, they they we're not, unable to run it. So what they've chosen to do is to join in with us for this summer and to offer these entrepreneurship mo modules um, for students in the SURE program. So if you're a more senior student or you've got um, a, a business idea, anything like that, uh, Brooke, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, I just want to jump in here because I feel like, um, you know, you come from science backgrounds um, or, you know, a background that's not business and you might think like, how does this apply to anything I'm doing? But um, I also work for, you know, research profile and impact. So we work with a lot of your professors and act like the people who are leading up the projects that a lot of you are probably working on. And, um, you know, everything that you are finding and using uh, really does get um, applied to companies, applied to uh, different areas of the university. And a lot of them have these like business background um areas that you will run into. So even if you are not um, a business or, you know, social science background where you think that your work will actually get used, I promise you it will. And so these are actually really great modules to undergo. So that's just my two cents. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, and especially when you're coming from that Edwards School of Business background. Another thing to remember is that sometimes um, when we think about research commercial commercialization, who do you think makes all of those amazing um, uh, 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 machines in each of the labs. Those machines are worth thousands of dollars and they can do really, really specific, really interesting things. So sometimes it's not the output from your research, but maybe you're actually working to to craft or, or change a particular machine that actually can become part of your summer research project as well. And that can also be incredibly valuable and um, be a way for that your lab or your supervisor to commercialize your research work. So it isn't just about the results of your research. Sometimes it's your methodology too. That actually makes a difference. So if you're interested, make sure you check out the entrepreneurship stuff as well. Here's the biggest question that I get asked from students is who keeps track? You do. You keep track of what you did. So students keep records of what events, what webinars you have attended live or watched afterward. Um, we will, my office will send out a survey that will go out at the end of term. So not until the end of August and then we have it open for usually three weeks or so um, so that students have time to kind of upload. Yeah, I went to this one. I went to this one. I went to this one and tell us what you went to and give us and give us that feedback. Then our office uploads the credit to the CCR. So it, it probably won't be uploaded until the middle of September, but we do. It is CCR credit, but you it's part of your professional development um, in terms of just just as as a student developing. It is up to you to keep track. So what um, else does she, what's that? Go, go ahead, Brooke. Uh, you know, please feel free. You don't have to wait till the CCR credits up to, you know, put it on your resume or use it in that kind of manner. Yes, so absolutely. That is so, something that yeah. you're looking for. Too. Exactly, because sometimes you're applying for jobs and you might not necessarily, uh, you know, be have, have to send them your transcript and or maybe you don't want to. Yes, it shows up on your USAS transcript, but feel free to make sure that you're putting your your that you're part of the SURE um, uh, program on your resume, absolutely. So what else does SURE do for students? It creates connections. So we have a whole number of student-led spaces. Uh, there has been a journal club. I'm not sure if it's gonna run again this summer, but if students are interested, please let me know. Uh, there is a Discord server. And uh, um, so please make sure that you join that. The link to join the Discord server is actually on the email that comes out from the Undergraduate Research Initiative that comes through MailChimp. There is a student club, so I just met with the president of the student club yesterday. It's called Science Research and Society, and we are going to run it again this summer. We started it in September and ran it all winter. It runs Fridays at noon, and the Science Research and Society Club is, is, is Vedahi here? Vedahi, if you're here, you can feel free to unmute yourself and, and talk about and talk about the club, but I'll just chatter about it if you like. But um, Science Research and Society is a very informal space. Sometimes it hosts uh, speakers 
speakers. Sometimes it hosts events. Um, we we did we uh, previewed uh, the documentary Picture a Scientist, the short version. We've done a number of things within Science Research and Society Club. This is very much a student led uh, space, and uh, it's a really great space to meet other students. So we really like it. Um, social events, we want to do a few social events this summer, including movie screening. So one of the movies that we're doing is, is Picture a Scientist, which is coming up on June 8th. We're hoping to do some lab crawls, um, if, but we may have to do them digitally this year. But if you're physically in a lab on campus, if you're amongst the lucky ones and you're actually physically on campus, if you want to create a video of your lab and you working in your lab and send it to, and share it with Brooke and I, we would love to share that with other students. So, so please put that and, and, you know, so add movie making to your summer resume. And, and I and will be sending out an email. Uh, probably in the next week with all of our channels and everything on it. So everything will just be in one place. All of the social media, the discord, the links to everything. So you guys will have it all in one place, just so you know. <laughs> Every email that you get from me that comes through that MailChimp, there's all those little icons at the bottom, and they actually all they they actually all work. They go right to where they're supposed to as well. Ideally, we'd like to have some post-pandemic in-person events, and maybe if things open up by the end of summer, we'll be able to do that. Um, I don't ice cream social. Bring your faculty supervisor. You know, we'll we'll come up with stuff like that. We also have taken on a bit of a role where we advocate for students and one of the projects that I want to work on this summer and I am on the hunt for volunteers to help me with this project, but I want to build a student supervisor agreement. Those of you who are part of the Dean's project at the University of Saskatchewan, this is in the College of Medicine, you guys have one. Um, you have a student supervisor agreement, so it kind of is a bit of a riff on that, but this one's specific to the college to College of Medicine and I want to have something that's a little bit more broad um, and it, what it does is it allows us to think through that any of these research positions are a two way space. Faculty have a lot of power, but at the same time, some of you may end up in situations or with supervisors where you find out part way along that it's not maybe the most perfect fit. So we want to make sure that we are a space that you can maybe come to and 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 talk to us. That if you're not comfortable talking to your supervisor, maybe you can come and talk to us and we can um, connect you with the right people to kind of work through your issues. So we want to make sure that nobody feels alone is, is really where we're going with this. But I would like if anyone's interested in working with me this summer in creating a student supervisor agreement that that sure students could potentially use or take back to their supervisors i'm all ears i'd, I'd love to create a bit of a working group around that so at the end of summer our capstone event is the sure symposium mark your calendars for august 25th to 27th um, it, if we're in person, that's great, but there still will be an online component, um, just so you know. So two years ago, we were in person. We were in um, uh, Convocation Hall. Last summer, we were fully online, of course, and so those, these are pictures from both of those events, just, just so you know. Um, if we can do an in-person, it will still be, we'll still have a hybrid component. We'll still have all of the posters and all of the presentations online as well. Um, judges and supervisors really like that because it gives them a way to to watch your presentations more than once, you know, and ask you questions and check in. And so we'll definitely do both. So mark your calendars for those of you who are expected to do a presentation. Some of you are expected to do a presentation again in the College of Medicine or the Western College of Veterinary Medicine. That's fine. What I would recommend to you is that you look at SURE at the SURE Symposium as a practice space. So you can do like your first version of your poster or your presentation, present it to the SURE Symposium, take the feedback from the judges because they're always judged, and then make changes to your presentation so that you can present it um, even better when you go to present it back to your college or your discipline. So but be sure to think about it that way. And yes, yeah, so this is this is Brooke's space, although I dabble here too. Uh, this this is so the undergraduate research initiative, which is who runs the Shore program, can be found across multiple spaces. So if you're on Instagram, we're there. Facebook, Twitter. I'm generally the one on Twitter. Uh, Brooks over on on Instagram. I suck at Instagram, um, but we, of course we have our YouTube channel. Uh, we are on LinkedIn. That's something that we're building. So if you have a professional profile on LinkedIn, be sure to follow us, and we will follow you back. And we also have a podcast series. And Brooke, do you want to talk about the podcast series? 
Yeah, so we usually we interview kind of a, a bunch of people. We've had, you know, faculty, we've had senior leadership, we've had lots of students, and we're always looking for people who want to talk about their undergrad research um, and what's so neat about it, things that they've found. Um, and we usually take those podcast interviews and also use them as student stories on our website. So if you are anyone is interested in doing that or discussing their experience this summer, uh, or anything that comes up that you think is really relevant to your experience as an undergraduate student doing research, um, I will maybe throw my email in the chat as well and feel free to reach out and we can talk about chatting um, in that space because we're always looking for more stories and for people to talk about their experience. And also, if you have a minute, please go listen to, we have like, I think nine or 10 episodes out now, about 20, 25 minutes each. Um, and it's a great way to hear from other people and what their experience has been, or even like establish potential people to contact in the future. So, yeah, feel free to go look at that. We have it on pretty much every platform you could think of Spotify, um, iTunes, all those things. So. Thanks, Brooke. I think that. Uh, oh, and Eve says they're a good listen. Well, we really, really appreciate that. So we have a new VP of research. So he is my boss's boss, Baljeet Singh. And and uh, Baljeet was our most recent podcast. And Baljeet is a huge proponent of undergraduate research. He loves it. He's always uh, worked in this space. So uh, if that's the only podcast that you listen to, I would recommend it. And then you can hear directly from Dr. Baljeet Singh, who is the vice president of research here at the University of Saskatchewan. And with that, I'm going to stop recording, but then I'm going to open it up to questions. So thank you very much. If you're watching this afterward and you have questions, please e email them to me.